This is code.org, and we are going to instantiate a painter object called my painter. All right, so we got this down. I have to write painter because, again, guys, there's a hidden painter class somewhere that I'm running, and I'm using it to create a, well, painter object. Now, the variable or what we're naming our object is my painter. And the reason I'm doing this on line seven is right here in this comment. Remember, comments are for us. The computer ignores any line that starts with slash slash. So that clues me in to do it on line seven. All right, painter equals my, my painter equals, and then we have to ask it to run some code to make our object. All right, we can't see into this class, but it exists somewhere, right? And what do I mean by class is not like the one you're in during the school day. What I mean is this. Notice public class, my neighborhood. It is contained usually within a file. And it's a chunk of code. It's a particular block of logic and properties. So there's a painter class somewhere. I'm asking it, hey, let me create this new object, this new thing. It's not going to be a word or a number. It's going to represent this painter class. And what do I want it to be able to do? Well, I need it to do everything painter can do. So all these behaviors, move, turn left, paint. And the way I make sure it can is this new, e this equals new painter. That way it goes and runs the constructor. It goes and grabs everything that the painter class can do. And now we can ask my painter to do it. We've created an instance of the painter class that we can use. All right. That all being said, ooh, this looks like a lot of walking for our painter. So I know we always start in the top left facing east. So right away, I think we're going to have to turn three times. I'm going to zoom out for this a bit. All right. And guys, notice I'm doing my painter dot, because if I just do turn left, it's going to yell at me. The computer has no idea, not a clue what I want to turn left, right? So it's going to not be happy because it doesn't know. I have to tell it exactly what do I want to turn left? Well, our painter, my painter dot turn left. Cool. And now I need this, let's see, I think that will make me face up. So once, twice, three times, right? I just copied and pasted real quick there, but I think that will do it. And then I'm going to do my painter dot move. And I need the dot again, and I need to write my painter. Otherwise, it won't know how or what to move. All right, let's give this a try. I should be trying this out more often. It's really easy, much easier to find your errors right away that way. Okay, and so now it asks us, we can use take paint. So I moved, I'm on the bucket, I might move that line up. And now let's go ahead and take paint. My painter, capital P, right? We do camel case. Camel case is where the first letter is lowercase, but the rest of the words are capital, no spaces in between. It's common in every programming language. Well, maybe not Python. Big paint. Boom. All right. Once. Oh, and obviously there's three paint. One, two, and three. Okay. I want to check. They always give us a bit more detail. They give us an example. Okay. So we don't paint this square, but we can paint the next one. All right. So that should take the paint. Let me move off. And now for painting, like they explain, we need an argument. We can put in a parameter. There is a parameter. We can tell it what color. So they say white. You just got to make sure it's in quotes because this parameter is what's known as a string or a word. Um, I don't know, only yellow to start. And semicolon. Do an interesting pattern. Don't just be lame. Once. Okay. Looks like I'll move again and then paint another. Uh, green, I guess. Oh, did I move? That's not going to work. Because move doesn't have an argument. We're just asking it to move. The computer doesn't need more data for that behavior. It doesn't have a parameter. Paint green. Okay. And it looks like I'll have to move and paint again. And this time I'll do blue. Let's see if I broke something. Ooh, will it let me? It will. Maybe. Yay! All right. So we got three, but I bet we're out of paint. Because remember, we only took three from the bucket. So now we got to move forward. But if we try to paint, it's going to break. There is no paint. I can prove it to you.
and it already knows right away we're about to run out of paint. Notice the council down here? So, got to kill that off. And what we got to do first is actually take the paint, right? And there's a four here, so computers are dumb. We have to tell it each time. Once, twice, three times, four times. Four separate lines to take paint should do it. And I turn left once. Let's see. And the cool thing about code, guys, is keep in mind, turn left here works. You might have said move, then turn left, and then take all the paint, right? Code's not exact. You want to achieve certain functionality. This would do the exact same thing. Heck, I'll leave it like that. All right, and now we need to paint. Let's do purple. And now we need to move. So, yellow, um, blue again, and red. One, two, three, four. Let's see if I broke something. Bam. So far, so good. Looks like we need to step forward, and at this point, we're out of paint again. Time to take us some paint. Or I could turn left first. Again, it's not always one way of programming. The goal is the same. I think I'll first take my paint. One, two, and three. And now I could do, bam, okay? Now, once I turn left, I'm going to want to go ahead and paint because I should have three. Then move, then paint. Let's go with blue. All right. I think this will do it. Let's go ahead and check. Bam. This is looking awesome. So I, uh, yeah, it's time to test. Yeah, and we did it. Awesome. That's a bunch of code. Onward.